we've adapted QMC and positioned the lighting. And in my other scene, I just kind of had the lighting coming from sort of a low angle from the right. Now, it's important to note that the placement of the, the location of the sun lamp doesn't affect anything. It's just the direction that it's pointing. So the shadows are going to be cast onto this wall um, in the direction that the lamp is pointing, which I want to be a little steeper. And there we go. Okay, so now if we go ahead and give this a render, you notice it has a distinctly more sort of, it looks like evening shot almost now. Now when you're in a shot, the sky would normally give you a sort of a blue reflection on everything, and so what we're going to use is environment lighting. So click on the world panel, um, enable environment lighting. Now one is way too high. Like for example, if I render it right now, it's just massively washed out sort of, and it's not the right color either. So I'm going to actually put it down to point um, 0.4. And I'm going to change this from white to sky color. And the sky color it uses your uh, horizon and zenith color from uh, your world settings up here. So we're going to change it to a blue color, actually. Who would have guessed that? <laughs> I'm going to mm, just a really nice blue. Uh, make this a little more blue, more like that. Now if we go ahead and give it a render, you notice it has a nice blue tinge. And also, um, if we left it, now you can see better. You, whoa, I don't know if you put it that high. If we put it at one, you could, you can see it's just too, way too blue. The sky wouldn't reflect that much color. So, uh, 0.4 is good. And there we go. It's pretty nice. It really looks pretty nice. And I don't think my son, I don't want to be able to see um, uh, this area where there's no shadow right here. Um, I think it just looks kind of funny. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate my lamp on the z-axis some more. Give it another test render here. And there you go. That's a little bit there, but that's alright. So now we're going to turn on ambient occlusion, which gives us sort of shadows and corners. And it fakes that sort of uh, darkness and crevices type look. So I'm going to set this to multiply and put the factor down to... Eh, actually, I'm going to leave it pretty high. 0.8 and f12 and now as you can see it's a lot darker in the corner there and kind of along the edge of the trash can in the little crevices all right so the final thing i'm going to add is um actually i'll wait on it i'll wait i'm going to go ahead and uh, model the plywood first so i'm going to go ahead and move this lamp camera and empty to this layer over here, so it's kind of out of the way for now. I'm going to hit Shift A. Okay, let's see. Uh, plane. Let's add a plane. Let's move it up. Um, go into edit mode. Scale it up. Scale, on the, uh, scale it narrower on the X axis. I'm going to hit and rotate X negative, uh, wrong way, rotate x 90 until I can see it's about the right size. That's way too small. I'm just going to scale it up. That's way too big. <laughs> I'd say about that size is pretty good. Okay, I'm going to go to edit mode. And now I'm going to add some subdivisions to this. Um, you'll see what I'm doing in a little bit. I'm actually going to use, I'm actually going to affect the geometry to have the grain of the wood once I start texturing. But for now, um, it's important to note that when you're trying to subdivide something using your W subdivide, it really helps when you have, um, shapes that are square, because then the subdivisions, um, are square. If not, they're all rectangular. Like, for example, if I just did subdivide right now, um, you know, it's all of these rectangular sort of subdivisions, but I want them, to, want them to be square. So if I have a rectangular shape, um, it's helpful just to put a loop cut in there and make it more square. So I see a two by three in this, meaning I would put a two by one, because it's a two by three shape or whatever. <laughs> I put the uh, two cuts this way, and then one cut this way, and then I'm left 
with almost pretty much square shapes here. And the reason why I want them to be square is because um, I'm actually going to um, use a displace modifier to put wood grain directly into the geometry of this. So instead of like, it's sort of like sculpting, but you use a, um, you use a displace modifier instead. But now we're clear to go. I like to put um, quite a few polygons in the mesh before I add a um, subsurf. It helps it keep it a little more organized, I think. So now I'm going to hit A to select everything. Um, w subdivide and drag it up to, I'm going to say, five cuts. Pretty good. Now if I hit um, E, I can extrude it and give it some thickness. And that's really all there is to it. Now though, um, I'm going to do right now preparation for UV unwrapping this. So I'm going to hit um, control tab to go into edge mode because it looks nicer. There's no other reason. And I'm going to hit alt and select this front edge here, control E and mark seam. Okay. So what we've done is we've basically isolated the front of this piece of plywood for putting a texture onto later. Now I need to also select the four corners up back and go ahead and mark a seam All right, so that the back will just unwrap properly. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and add a subdivision service modifier. Once again, we see we get a lot of rounded edges. So back into edit mode. First one I'm going to add is a loop cut this way, very close to the edge. Loop cut this way again is close, pretty close, but not too close because then it would uh, the, the, the squish the uh, mesh too much. It has to do one this way, have to do one this way, and have to do one vertically. And what I'm looking for again is a square in this corner here, so it's as even as possible. And if you go into the side, you know. You can see a nice um, even uh, corner here. You don't want, for example, to have um, this one like really close and that one, and the um, you want you don't want this to have really close and then this one you know further away. And just, uh, the polygons in this corner aren't as even, and you want them to be as even as possible. Okay, so one to add on the bottom. Okay, so that. That's it, that's our plywood right there. Um, but first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and move it back a little bit and I'm gonna leave it vertical for now. Um, until, you know, I'm gonna leave it vertical until I add texturing on it. But first thing I'm gonna go and hit A and U unwrap. Click this little diagonal part, drag it over, UV image, um, get rid of the render. And as you can see, this part is the front of the mesh. And I can tell because if you look at it, you know, the front um, is simply all the big squares plus, plus a little row. So all these big squares plus this little row, while the back um, has all the big squares plus, you know, a little row, then a little tiny row, and then another big one. So it's really easy to tell what is what. Now this part of the tutorial, um, I wouldn't actually do this. I wouldn't actually UV unwrap this probably um, because I would just take an image that's approximately the same size as the plane, you know, paint it up and then go ahead and stick it on. But um, this shows you how you would use um, the GIMP to do uh, UV unwrapping and setting up layers and stuff like that. So yeah, get into a little bit of the GIMP as well. So I'm gonna position this I'm going to rotate this by 90 degrees. Scale it up until it's about the same size. And that should do it. Now, this is probably, I don't know. I'm going to have to do a new image. Um, save the resolution size. I'm going to do, uh, uh, let's see. I don't know if this is, this looks like a 4x3 or more. Of a, eh, I think probably. 
So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, four thousand. Yeah, it looks more like a three, but yeah, that's a little bit big anyway. You don't want humongous textures. I mean, for a little scene, it doesn't really matter, but if you're putting a lot in the scene, it kind of adds up. So I'm gonna do three thousand by two thousand. And um, I just put the image in the wrong way, so oops, duh. I need to do 2,000 by 3,000. And that's a little better. Now, of course, it's all, sque it's all squished, so let's go ahead and pull it back out. And as you can see, it's about right. They're pretty much squares, the subdivisions. Now, here's the important part. I'm going to go ahead and do these. Export to the layout. And I'm going to select um scalable vector graphic svg and i'm going to hit, go ahead and just go ahead and save this after one svg export and export uv layout okay so that's good and guess what that's all for part one so I'll go ahead and see you in part two. Now this part one is probably the, uh, this part is probably the second or third part of the first part, but um, I'll go ahead and see you in the next part. And in the next section, we will be starting to texture and add further detail to the scene. So see you then.